So these are the steps of the inspired spine olef. Patient is in prone. I put the lateral machine going above and AP machine coming uh, from uh, bottom up. Uh, up is the x-ray source, bottom is the camera. And in the lateral, I adjusted that you see the end plates very clearly. In the AP, you have to put the spinal process in the middle of two pedicles. So you have a true AP for that level. It doesn't matter if it's not perpendicular to the disc, but you have to be able to see the trajectory of the disc. Even if patient has previous uh, scars and so on, I always get a true AP and mark it in the AP. And then I get the trajectory of the disc. And then on the lateral, when the, literally the, I'm sorry, the camera is up, the x-ray source is down, I use the elasticity of the wire itself and mark the middle of the uh, middle of the disc of the level. The end plates are very visible. I'm in the in the lateral view. I'm in the middle of the disc. I mark it. I go to the here where patient's uh, direction of the skin changes goes from horizontal to to um, vertical, mark this, and then take that, transfer this distance to the midline, to the continuation of the same line. It may align or may not align with that line that you just draw. So from here to here, so practically you have two lines, that's entry point. Upper one, closer to midline, let you go more steep. The bottom one, let you go more uh, laterally. And even if you can come a little lower, you can actually perform a direct lateral with this instrumentation, practically prone lateral with this instrumentation. But then once you have marked, you have your entry point. Then at the entry point, you go with the um, probe. A uh, patient has to have four twitches and you stimulate at three milliamp and you go at the 45 degree angle to approach the Cambine triangle. And uh, I think even before that, I put a Jamshidi in, get some uh, bone marrow. I, I get the first 5 cc of each bone from bone marrow. After that, uh, what you get is blood and not bone marrow. And literally, I mix it with my tricalcium phosphate, which has the consistency that works the best. We cut it usually in strips, four strips out of this, and that enable us to soak it well. After three to five minutes, um, you get the best attachment of the material and that's the best consistency for to work with. And, but then after we are done with, the, with this part, literally what we do is approach the disc at 45 degree. Can you see if the, it comes out well? We approach the Cambin triangle from our approach with at 45 degree and uh, we still need that 3 milliamp. I aim for the pedicle of the upper level, I'm sorry, the pedicle of the lower level and I, at this angle, and then I drop on the top of the pedicle. I drop on the top of the pedicle here to the Cambin triangle, and then once I'm there, I use uh, higher stimulation, 4 milliamp. At that point, you know, you have to keep that space uh, by putting the sleeve down. The sleeve goes down, and then it, uh, you, I poke it. You have to get the x-rays, make sure that this doesn't move. But then I use the pokey part of the K-wire, and I poke it inside of the disc, and then practically I created the path from the skin to the disc. Now, once I have that pad, does it come out here right now? Yeah, you're centered and everything. Good, is it good? So, once I have, the, Go ahead. I have the pad, no, I can move this around. Put it down, that sure. stabilizes that, and I move this around. Where should I move it to? Here? Uh, the problem is the angle, you're not quite high enough to see there. Maybe you can turn it a little bit like this to see it. Yeah. Okay, so. Once the K-wire is in place, the first step is the dilation. And 
with the dilation. These are the perks of each of the instrument. So the dilation goes with this. You are going to go through the skin all right, but then the fascia will give you resistance. This is one of the first part. If you try to force it, you may bend the K-wire. But what I do is let just take a hammer. I just hammer it through the fascia or cut a slit. Don't fight the fascia, otherwise you may bend the K-wire. And then you have to start it all over. But then I massage it like this, roll it in, and go to the Cambin triangle. Once I'm in the Cambin triangle there, under X-ray I see I make sure that my K wire is not passing the midline in the APN lateral. If I need to take it out, this is the second part. To fine control this, you can try to pull it down and then all of a sudden you're completely out. Look at, I wrap my finger around the uh, grip here. Then I use a K coker. I put the coker on my finger and look at that here now. I can now very little but a very controlled push it up and down okay so that gives you a really good control of controlling the k-wire that you don't just all of a sudden jump out but then once you have it in the proper place and literally the uh, the dilator is in the right place the dilator tip should pass the midline sometimes i go even to the other side and i break the osteophyte if needed then at that point actually the K wire can come out, the handles can come out. Now the tube goes in. Now this is a, another perk. Make sure that is not overused. That make sure that the tips of the this is truly smooth. If like for whatever reason that is chipped or it has a corner, sharp corner, that is where what you are going to pass through next to the nerve root. And uh, just make sure that the, this is truly like when you walk it here, this is smooth. If you walk it through your finger now, Mitch, mm -hmm. walk it through your finger, you feel that mm -hmm. it is not smooth. Do you see that there? Because mm -hmm. this is our demonstration tool, obviously. But you feel that. That should be smooth. Not a perk, okay? So then you go in. Again, massage it. And until you pass the fascia, you pass the um, whatever tissue is there, once you are on the hard surface, you can either use this and use the, not, this is another part. Don't use the top of the hammer, use the here, the handle, because they stop each other, they sort of lock, and you don't slip. So either do this, or you can use the barrel, you put it on top, and then use the barrel, and you tap it in. Literally then, you feel that this is in a between the disc base. Most of the time, disc is collapsed, and it provides some pressure on that, and you can feel that. If you barely can move that, this is a one centimeter tube. So if you barely can use that, uh, move that, your cage is going to be nine and ten. But if you can barely move it, it's usually eleven. If it's looser than that, usually you will use cages the twelve, thirteen, fourteen. But now it, this is in place. You have created the safe path from the skin to the disc base. And now we are going to use the series of two to do our discectomies. Now I'm going to go the steps of what I use. There is no orders to that. And uh, uh, just you have to go by feeling about what feels right. But exactly that's what it is. This is the most important part. This job is done by feeling. You feel when you're... Metal is on the bone, you feel a high frequency vibration on the tip of your fingers, so um, then you know you're on the bone and the cartilage is gone, because otherwise it just smoothly turns, whereas where you're on the bone, you feel that there's a high frequency vibration, sometimes you can't even hear it. Now, at this point, get a lots of pictures. Make sure that the tip of your tube in the AP has passed the half of the pedicle, at least half of the pedicle, but not more than the entire pedicle. And in the lateral, make sure that you are half a centimeter to a centimeter, half a centimeter to a centimeter in. So 
half of the pedicle to entire pedicle in the AP and half a centimeter to a centimeter in the lateral. This is the proper positioning of this. But then you get an x-ray, make sure that it's not more than that in, and then get lots of x-ray when you're doing that. So you go in and create a path, a cavity, and these lines are 27, 30, 33. And then once you create a cavity, you can as well fan it a little back and forth to make that cavity bigger. But then by then, you know actually what length of the case you are going to use. Because 27, 30, 33, on the, the x-ray, you see what is the proper depth for you. And at this point, practically, the next step is using discectomy tools. These are the tools that we use for that. First of all, um, the, what we call fanning caret here. It fans up when you pull this together, it fans it out. If you push that, that can jump back. This is still open, but once you pull it back into the tube, it closes up passively. And here you see as well the numbers that shows uh, the, how big your cage should be. Sometimes it's useful, but most of the time by how this moves and turns, I already know what cage size I'm going to use. Very important thing. This turns only clockwise. Otherwise, if you try to turn it counterclockwise, the fans may separate and then you may break it. And uh, I have never happened to me, but uh, theoretically it's possible to break this uh, if you turn it counterclockwise. So always clockwise. So what I do, I go in, Open, I aim it at the disc base, like I aim it like this and then open it and then turn it a few times, then open it a little more, then turn it a few times and open it a little more and you can fan it as well. So apparently you're losing the pieces. Then I use pituitary and I use it in this, in this fashion. I already go in and about to come out I open it and take bites in all quadrants in the here and then I use it backhand and then again take quadrant very useful tool it just takes time to get used to it but once you get used to it you, you never do old-fashioned discectomy ever again then there are few things that uh, as well are important to use so you use the drill fanning correct take the pieces out and this is a very useful tool now um, sometimes it has to be obviously put together properly and uh, maybe we make another video to how to put it together right after this but for the surgeon part it, this is like first of all it should be put together that this window here is where the curve comes out um, sometimes it's put the wrong way, it goes the other way, but you will know it on the x-ray. So literally you first, you put it through the tube inside of the disc base and then you open it up. And as you see, when you open it up, it goes in the direction of the window here. And now I put it all the way up and this is now a perk. I, so it's all the way out and then use my finger until it closes, then bring it back here so that only part that is useful comes out and not anymore. And then what you do with this motion, you literally loosen the disc on both sides and you, again you feel the high frequency vibration on that. Now. I'm pretty aggressive with this and go around and sometimes even move around if it let me move around like that then once I'm done with one side this is another perk I pull it back turn 180 degree then I come out again and it goes the other way and do it this other side as well then you have to stabilize it then you can pull it out Sometimes this can lock and so on. If it locks, um, obviously use another one, but it's as well possible to use it without pulling it back. Then this is what I do. 
try not to do that, but if that's a rescue technique, that this is already in, I put it in, you look at the direction. I push it in and do it that way, okay? But then you have to control this very clearly. But this is a rescue technique that sometimes here again, in the direction, push it in, turn the direction, comes out, okay? So now you have loosened it significantly. You go back with the pituitary, take more pieces out. And this is a really, I love this instrument as well. It's what we call rotating curette. I'm sorry, the uh, articulating rake. And I go in both direction where the end plate is. I go in and do this. Uh, sometimes I rest my hand on the patient and then I do this action both in the forward and backward. And then I loosen this. And then again, I go with the pituitary and take the pieces out. Sometimes truly big chunk has come, come out. And then at this point, once I'm again, by feeling, I'm comfortable with the end plate preparation with the discectomy, I use tricassium phosphate, soaked with bone marrow in this. I go inside of the tube and then this is directional. You can direct it whatever direction you wanna go. That's another perk I'm going to tell you. Um, often, I on purpose try to break a little through the end plate. With the, and you can do that with the rake or with the, uh, with the pituitary. So I literally I penetrate the end plate and it can bleed, but then you will pack it with tricassium phosphate. It stops right away. But then I create truly a pathway, a, a highway from one bone to another. That is partially why our fusion rate is 98% because I create a true path from one bone to another. It's okay because it's, it's in one place, your cage is going to go around it. So it, uh, I try to poke in the middle of the bone. Then at that point, you know, you have done your discectomy, you have put your uh, material in. Then you hair wire goes in. I rest the K wire in the tricalcium phosphate that I have packed in. Now here comes the putting the cage in. Now the cage is, should be put properly together in smaller cage, not in big cages. Sometimes it's possible to put it the wrong way. This is the correct way. The windows toward the where they go to the end plates are in the direction of the cross. But sometimes it's possible that somebody put it the wrong way. And in a smaller cage, uh, it, this is sometimes uh, actually possible. So if it's the wrong way, you just have to correct that. You see, this is locked here. You just have to pay attention to that, that it's in the correct way. Same thing. You go in. You pass through the skin, don't fight the skin, to pass the fascia with the hammer. Make sure at all point it's aligned. The K wire and the cage and the handle are aligned. If there's an angle, you're going to bend it. And once you pass the bone, you feel it. You may get a signal, neurophysiology signal, when you're passing it almost always after 10 to 30 seconds, it subsides. But then when you're on the bone, First, again, look at that. I don't use the tip of the hammer. I use the handle here because they lock into each other and stay safe. I make sure the tip of my hammer, um, the tip of my cage is truly uh, digged in into the capsule. Then once I'm comfortable with that, I, on the x-ray, I pull it out and bend it uh, over this groove so uh, that it's secure. And then, but at this point, when I bend it, it has to be less than half of the vertebral body traversed. And then I use the big hammer. This is the point you have to just get it in. No love tapping. If you are hitting it more than three times, you're causing more energy that get transferred. And probably rate of one of the factors with the rate of uh, nerve root uh, injury or nerve root irritation is number of the passes we do with your probe. And second uh, no, uh, correlation is with how fast you get it at this point in because the tip of that has to get in the tip of that it would open up the space and this is the point that the critical moment that it should go fast 
So once you put it in, once you dig it in, take the big hammer and just ram it in. There's no way around that. If you're hitting it more than three times, you're literally, if you have a high energy impact and it quickly goes in, it opens up the space. But when you're doing this love tap, the energy get transferred through the surrounding tissue. And that is one of the factors correlating with nerve injury uh, that we are, I have found out. So you put it in then once the, the half of the cage is in, actually the K-wire can come out and then you do final positioning. And you can as well, once the half of it is in, you can as well change somewhat the angle and put it more in the front or to the other side and so on. But, uh, as well, I put it sometimes eccentric uh, on one side or another to correct for scoliosis. But then you literally disconnect it. Now, you remember I told you that sometimes uh, this is not a perk, that uh, it's put the wrong way. You think you're in the correct way, but you are not. With this cage, only with the titanium cage, you can do that and never try that with the peak cage. Once you are in, you still can overcome the force and turn it the correct way. So inside. I used to do a go when I go through the cabin triangle. I used to go with the bigger cages this way and turn it then automatically to have a smaller profile. I found that has really no effect on any kind of outcome. So I, these days I just go the way I'm going to go in because it opens up its own way. But you have to pass that segment really quickly. Um, now, once this is in, obviously then the, you disconnect and take the inserter out. And uh, at this point, you know, uh, if there is a need to go back in and reattach that, um, there's a hole in the skin and there is a memory, path memory. You just put, if you need to go back in, you take the dilator, you just let the gravity do the work. If you push it, you create new path. But if you let the gravity just find its way, it finds its way through the tissue and find surprisingly well, finds the cage. You feel the cage, you can then put a K wire over this into the cage and then take this out Put that back in if you want to reposition or if you want to take it out, you can here disconnect that. You can just put that back in, re engage the cage, and then either you use a mallet that it has a, a slit in it and tap it out, or if you don't have that, you can just put a K wire, uh, yeah, coker here, and then coker on that and then you can tap this out and uh, another thing that sometimes you notice uh, in the another perk then when you're trying to get into the disc sometimes they're osteophytes you remember at the beginning you at the beginning these are not the perks of this at the beginning you have the sleeve and you have the sharp end going in, but there's also still fight in your way. You see the trajectory is right. You're right on top of that, but there's also a still fight holding you back. What I do is I hold this. I put just two to three millimeter, maximum five millimeter of that. Look at, I'm resting it on my hand. I use the hammer, I take this side or this side, and I break through those two fight. I put it in. Sometimes even I use two coker, one coker holding this, one coker holding that. And but by doing that, I truly break through those two fight. On the x-ray, in cases like that, you see a deflection. You see that the tip of that is deflecting on the bone. That's the absolute proof you're in the disc space. Um, and you're not in a, you know, a funny position. But make sure that in the AP and lateral, you're advancing to the same amount. Like, you know, not past the midline in the AP and in the lateral, you are just a centimeter or so, except you're planning to put the cage completely on the other side. Let the cage go where you want to go, not you follow the cage. So um, now let's talk about actually at, the, at this point, talk about the perk of some of these instruments. Um, this, let's start with this. We talked about that if this sometimes jams and how to use that. We talked about that this should be the direction of the uh, loop, but sometimes if they, it's possible to put it the other way, okay? Um, 
it is, you feel that there's a weak point in this you feel that when it breaks and that's always breaks right here which is very safe place because this is the, the night and all and the other side is secure and then you can still with force hold the thing the tube and, uh, and then just with force pull it out okay the way it puts in it get put in is that you know literally you have to uh, disconnect the, this and this is how it's put in together these plates they come in this form and make sure you, you see that in both ends and you see here that there is a it's sometimes hard to see but there is a groove here this goes toward the groove you go in on both ends here and here you put that in and then you turn it this way and this is where it breaks when it breaks you hundred percent of the time when it has happened is there and sometimes i put it abuse it i sort of aim it for that because then i know i have used the maximum capacity of this so and this is again the groove you feel it the groove here it goes in the direction of the window here before it comes out here actually you have to put this in and then you put it in and then you turn at this point you know you can attach the grip then it helps you to pull it in better when you are in do not turn this because if you turn this it just does this the tip turns around if you use this you have to hold this steady and turn the handle to turn the knob here and again if it blocks then just keep it open and use the other three so now regarding this instrument um we talked about that that it opens actively but it closes passively meaning like that and if it's in the tube look at that here it opens up it won't come out but if you literally push this and bring it back now look at the tip it closes passively and comes out let's talk about that to put it uh, together or take it apart this this is the knob for that you see this is flush this is not this is what actually let you come out and there is this is what's holding it back there sometimes it wears off and when you try to open to the maximum this is another part important information sometimes it just ejected no problem you just come out then this stays in and then this passively close and you just take it out either they give you another one but this corner here is sometimes worn and that ejects when you're trying to use it so to put it back you go this way and you push it in here here it goes you see that it, that is the direction of the window you go back in it's the other way around flip it 180 degrees it goes 180 degrees so the little notch has to be facing down oh the okay the well here you are the buttons are facing up okay so the notch goes down here and then oh there's another notch here okay mm. so then it's engaged yeah, this is the notch okay this is the thing that goes that uh, so again you're yeah, pushing it off here this goes the direction of this one where not the window is okay so here and it engages okay so um then actually uh, so far so far so good now um, Another thing is that uh, we are, I'm going to show you is the decorticator itself. Um, if you are going to use that, the uh, decorticator is used this way. Obviously, when you put a K-wire in, already you have a K-wire inside of the pedicle here, right there. You have put the jam sheet, you have put the K-wire. And... This is the decorticator. Make sure, absolutely make sure this is locked in. Because if it's not, there is a lip here that will hold you back on the tissue and just rip it apart. 
But if you do that, it's a smooth surface that slides and opens and dilates. Now, obviously, it, the direction, this is eccentric. You see there's a groove here. This is where the K-wire goes in. There's a groove there. And the direction of that has to be, the facet is always superior and medial to the pedicle. So that's all what it is to it. You put it in, make sure that you don't change the angle. You go down and you are there. And once you are on the bone, that is the time you let this go and drop in. And then with this motion, you grind the surface of the facet. You see, it's very aggressive. It's already taking the facet apart. And once you do that, have done that, you have opened up the pores of the facet on both sides. You take this out, drop just a little bit of tricalcium phosphate, then use the temp, the flat piece, same way. Make sure you don't put any tricalcium phosphate behind this because you need to be in that direction. And then you put it in, you put it in again, you tap it in in both ends. And then you hold this, you come, it, come out at the skin, you pull it and take it out. Now, when you are doing that, sometimes it's possible to bend the K-wire. And there are a few methods of you know, it, it's rescuing it. And you can't even rescue the really sharp bend. But if the bend is literally more than 45 degrees, uh, so if it, the screw, if the K-wire is bending less than 30 degrees, what you can do is when you put your screw in, let, let's just imagine this is the screw. I have put the screw in and I'm going in. I'm hitting the bend right here. This is what I do again. I hold the screw handle. I pull this and I adjust it on the x-ray that it's as aligned as it can be. And then either I pull it out or I roll the bend over the screw handle. And that sort of pull the bend in the screw. If the bend is more than 45 degrees, you are much safer to put a Jamshidi back in. As a matter of fact, if the bend is more than 35 degrees, put the Jamshidi in, down to the bend, literally then roll this over the Jamshidi to pull the bend inside, and because the inside of that is bigger in the Jamshidi than in the cooker, and then put the Jamshidi back in. Take your K-wire out, put a new K-wire in, and here you are. Here you go. You can rescue that by doing that. So, um, this is more or less what I have. Um, obviously, you know, once you put the cage in, you either use this or a coker to open up the knob. Sometimes it's really tight. Um, but this is so far what I got. What am I missing, Mitch? Thank you, Governor. Okay, thank you. Stop it.